pleasant good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen, from Andover High School, where today QCTV and QCTV.org are pleased to bring you some non-conference basketball action between the 5-3 and three Moundsview Mustangs and the 3-3 three and three Andover Huskies. Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Anderson, joined alongside by the mayor, uh, Jim Childs. I don't know if that's official or not. It's maybe an unofficial title. Not official, no. This basketball team for Andover, they obviously, they're still kind of in the midst of the growing pains a little bit, graduating Kopetsky and Masungu, but they're a young team that seems to be finding their way. Yeah, and they've got another Kopetsky on it. So Alice Kopetsky has done a great job with shooting the three ball, a uh, good job with driving. Fenton uh, has done a nice job of, of filling some of the voids that, that Kopetsky uh, and Masungu left last year uh, and they've got a, a, a really good interior presence with uh, Denicky Luke Denicky who's clean up the boards with uh, 13 plus rebounds and they're scoring like crazy and they're gonna need that tonight because Moundsview is also scoring they just won their last game over Chisago 92 to 80 and they, they seem like they can fill it up the question is can anybody stop anybody what's gonna be the, the thing that you're looking for tonight well tonight it's gonna be important you know I, I think you look at uh, you know uh, moral victories uh, you know Andover did a Great job against Minnetonka. Really held held them to, uh, you know, a six point victory. They they are they can be strong on defense if they can control the rebounds and get their bigs involved. I think tonight will be a good a good day for the Huskies. Well, the booming hip hop music means it's almost time to play basketball. So we'll take it from right here. The Mustangs and the Huskies are next on QCTV. Back to the fence and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught, 20, 10, touchdown! This is going to be in the gap. Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, go to the place to the yes! Huskies win their first state championship. inside the Andover Gymnasium Fieldhouse, whatever you'd like to call it here at Andover High School. Tim and Jim hanging out with you just a few days after the holiday here, heading towards New Year's. Uh, kids are on winter break, but here we are playing basketball as the Huskies and the Mustangs get set to do battle in this one. And you said to me, Jim, that you did all your, your advanced research. They've never played before these two teams, they, as far they, as you can see. They have not. And I think so this will be, uh, you know, the inaugural uh, Moundsview Mustangs and over Huskies uh, voyage together, and you know both teams uh, um, are strong 4A teams in uh, in very in different sections, but they they both come in with some great experience. All right, there's the tap one, and it'll be it looks like Moundsview ball after Denicky tapped it out of bounds, couldn't be saved by Kopetsky, and uh, we are ready to uh, take it from there. Fredheim will throw it in. Get it in the backcourt quickly here to Logering. Logering's going to work it. And again, keep an eye on the shot clock. It's only like our third or fourth game on QC <laughs> following this, so we're still all getting used to it. Inside feed. Logering's going to take it back up top. Opening kind of a, it's a bit of a man-to-man -man here to start. Inside feed here. Moundsview looking for the first hoop. Nice kick out. Drive kick from three. Missed it short. Look from Krushanis on the outside, but the follow through is good for Eli Rowe. And keep an eye on him. He's averaging 18 coming in. Yeah, a couple of games ago, he was 16 for 16 from the line. He's a solid offensive threat for the Mustangs. So Bagali and Kopetsky working in the backcourt, and there's a quick turnover as they were trying to get that one inside. That was Fenton who had it and lost it. And now they bring it across Logering. Works between the rings, going to get a little catch. Nice give and go that time. Work back up top, Fredheim. Fredheim gives it off to Krushanis, who drives it in, can't finish, and a rebound taken by Denicky. Denicky pushes to Begali, and Begali's trying to use the left hand, can't finish. Denicky can't follow through, and a rebound taken by Eli Rowe. Now one on two, I'd like to see Den uh, Begali be able to just pull back and see what else is coming with him. Moundsview, another possession. They're up 2-0 early on, just underway first half. Logering catch. From the elbow, had a look. Now he'll catch a cutter and a nice easy layup. No, Krushanis can't finish it. And it's a quick move the other way. Three on two for the Huskies. Fenton drives. No charge, no block called. They let him play on. Denicky on the inside gets mugged, no call. And now finally we'll get the whistle <laughs> over there on Fenton as he went diving for it with Eli Rowe coming after him. Well, uh, Luke Denicky is an all-state uh, uh, football player and he got into a 
football game right there. Is, uh, that was uh, some tackling going on. <laughs> and it on. was a, actually a pretty good strip by yeah. Logering on the inside when you look at that replay. Oh, yeah. man, here they are. Just two on one all over Kopetsky. They take it away from him. Here come the Huskies going the other way. That was in slow motion from Joey Fredheim, but he's going to draw the contact. Yeah. We'll see the Mustangs going to that little half-court trap uh, in uh, in the corners. They do a nice job of uh, being able to just isolate the, the, the uh, ball handler. So you take another look at that. Look at you right on that trap, how they just boxed him right in. And now we'll go to the line here as we get you back to live action. First free throw good from Fredheim, and it's 3 nothing. A little surprised to see the Huskies with nothing in the first couple of minutes here. Well, they've had a couple of opportunities. Denneke on that one rebound uh, uh, had a chance. There he is with another rebound. Hard off the heel on the free throw from Fredheim. 3-0 still just underway. Huskies looking for their first basket. They go Kapetsky, Alex Kapetsky. Very familiar name. You're going to have a whole bunch of Kapetskys. Years of Kapetskys <laughs> here at Andover. Yeah, good basketball players. I know his brother's doing well at Concordia. Bagali in the... Bleach Blonde trying to drive it in, had to give it away as well that time, looking for Fenton, and they haven't been able to get him involved yet. Inside feed, beautiful to Rowe, but Rowe gets swatted a bit by Begali as it looked like he kind of altered the shot, and Fenton's going to get an open three on the other end and knock it down. Well, you can't, you can't, just can't allow him to have an open three. He is deadly from outside the arc. Nice job of finding Fenton on that one by Kopetsky. Yeah, get a chance to set and get a clean look. Square the shoulders. You're going to make a lot of shots, especially when you're as talented as Fenton. Oh, and there's a reach by Denneke, and that's a pretty easy call. Yeah, that's foul number two on Denneke. He's probably going to have to come out, and uh, Eddie Miles will be in. Yeah, it's kind of a frustration foul right there, right? I mean, just yeah. no reason to do that one. Well, it's a physical game. We've seen it. We've seen it. It's, it's physical so far, and, and you can't take it to a different level. But uh, we'll get uh, Eddie Miles come, uh, come in, the sophomore. And he's a big kid as well. Nice little yep. inside feed and a good finish that time as Fredheim gets the layup. It's 5-3, Mustangs lead. As Miles built like a uh, Mack truck as he comes in. Just a big, strong kid. Yeah, and they might of, feed him. Yeah, a lot of growing to do too. Don't say that. That's scary. Three ball from Fenton. He knocks it down. Well, he's That's feeling, two. He's feeling it. It's got that Larry Bird look where he sets yeah. it behind his ear like that. That's yep. kind of old school. Love that. 6-5, Huskies with the lead. Nice move by Fretheim, and he takes it in on a beautiful little spin move. And they're back on top are the Mustangs. Five for Fretheim. I tell you what, that front court is athletic. I mean, they just they just know how to get up and get drive through that ball in. And how about a heat check from the outside? No, but Fenton follows his shot beautifully. Tries to swing it back out to Kopetsky and does. Fenton's wide open in the corner. Can't do that. He knocks it down. Oh. Oh. You cannot leave him open, Jim Childs. Timeout taken. Nope, hang on. Little official timeout. Are we having some, is there a little blood oh, or something? No, I think I think the, I think he dis, uh, dislocated his, his finger real quick. I, to be honest, Ooh. I... Ooh. Yeah, he's back in. Thanks, Lisa. The trainer's in, but yeah. uh, uh, Mikey Deshaun in for. I thought he was complaining because his hand was too hot. That's what it was. <laughs> I thought he was on fire. I didn't see the hit. <laughs> so Deshaun into the game, and uh, they'll give Fenton a chance to kind of collect himself. And it's nine seven on three three pointers from Fenton. He's already got nine. He averages twenty. Drive Fredham. He's got the Fredheim's got the hot hand for Moundsview, but he misses that time on the turnaround. And Kopetsky quickly pushing. Now Mikey's got it on the wing. Now they're going to swing it. Bagali works it back up top. He's got Shaw. Now Kopetsky is this blonde backcourt doing its thing. Inside <laughs> feed for Miles. Turns it around up straight. No, he can't finish. But Miles goes in and grabs the rebound. It's up for grabs and taken by Logering. You're right. He's, he's a force in the middle there. He just is a, a, a large person. Good at. Athleticism and good body, too. He clears the space, doesn't he? Yeah, he certainly does. Jacob Sampson had that one up top. Looking for it again. Has it. He's open for three with a look. And gets, no, he can't get the members bounce because he's not a member. And we're going <laughs> the other way. Mikey D. Oh, Euro step by Mikey Deshin, but can't finish. And it's still up for grabs. Finally taken by Shaw. Kopetsky wide open. Got it. Well, here's the note, Jim. Yeah. If they're wide open from three, they're probably going to make it. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you what, that's uh, that's five out of the last six. 
uh, or four out of the last five for the Huskies from three-point land. Logering wide open, got a look himself and a good answer. That was a big one. They needed it. Well, we were talking before about, about the, the pace and intensity and the scoring. I, I think we're on track for one of those higher scoring games. We're certainly moving that direction. 12-10, yeah. the Huskies lead on four three-pointers, and I don't think they're done shooting those yet. I feel like there's more to come, Jim. Yep. Bagali up top, guarded. A little bit of an advantage of size in this matchup. Bagali works back on Dishan, who's guarded by Krushanis. Mikey puts it on the floor. Going to be picked up and guarded by Sampson as they move to a bit more of a zone up top. Inside, Miles puts his big shoulder in but couldn't finish, and a rebound by the Mustangs. Yeah, good offensive set. They were strong on the perimeter with defense. Get it into your big guy. Let him make a, a shot. 12-10. Mounds you. Oh, nice feed right there. Rowe can't finish on the alley-oop. Got in a little too deep and couldn't play it off the window like he wanted. Dishan feeds, it's Bagali. Bagali goes to Miles. Back up top, Kapetsky, and they swing it around. Drive to the paint, drive and kick. This is textbook ball right here, Swish. Oh. What a job by Dishan to be able to get it uh, get it over to a wide open Kapetsky. Great job. The drive and kick yeah. all day if you can get it. Oh, and trying to answer on the other side, Krushanis thought about the three. He'll drive on Miles, but instead he's going to get a wide open row for three, and that's hard off the heel and a rebound by Miles. Uh, getting row into the uh, offensive set is important for this Mustangs team to, to keep pace with the Huskies. Deishan works that speed up top, doing all this with Fenton sitting down after he opened with three threes. Five threes total as two from Kapetsky have come in these last few minutes. Miles on the inside. He stepped. Don't be traveled. Well, Sub's coming. Yeah, the shot clock has not been an issue. In fact, we could probably take it off and still uh, and not have to worry about. Uh... <laughs> Here's uh, Jack Dahl into the game. This is one that you thought about because he had a big game the other yeah, night. He did. 32 points uh, against uh, Chisago and uh, really uh, was great at finishing. Good shooter from the perimeter and could get take it inside. Here's Rowe again. Back up top to go. There's Dahl who caught it. Now Rowe has it. Drive, kick, feeds Ben Arnold who just checked into the game. Back to Krushanis up top between the circles, and he'll give it off to Logering. Cody Logering going to put it on the floor. Feed it again to Arnold, who comes cross court. Krushanis on the end line. That touches that, and it's out of bounds. What an effort. Good energy on the defense by the Huskies right now. It just they, they seem to be just moving their feet and uh, being in front of the, uh, the uh, Stangs right now. Quinn stay into the game for the Huskies as Coach Haben going to the bench here. Habel going to the bench. Deishan for three. No, can't knock that down. Oh, they almost got stay for an over the back, but they let him play on. Logering goes through, has to pick up the dribble as he loses the numbers. Dahl, oh, they got away with a walk there. Logering for three. No, in and out, but a rebound taken. Freshly into the game that time was Nate Edelman. And instead leaves it for Dahl. Edelman will get the rebound again. And Edelman can't finish, and that's going to get knocked out of bounds. Um, Mustang's getting some looks, not knocking him down right now. Yeah, they're able to, I mean, what, that's a, a set with uh, two strong offensive rebounds and just can't put it through the hole. The, uh, they've been stuck on 10 for a while. Trailing by five. Kapetsky, really the only starter. Him and Bagali, the only two on the floor that started the game. Bagali gets his first look from the outside. He'll miss that one hard, but a rebound by Miles. Back up, Kapetsky looking for three in a row. He's got it. And Kapetsky's got nine, and it's 18-10 to 10 on six three-pointers from the Andover Huskies early on. Inside feed, and they'll get a foul. Kind of a delayed whistle, but they will get it on as Jack Dahl takes it up and takes it strong. Let's see if it goes on miles or not. But, boy, I tell you what, what a... Huskies are they're two Kopetsky and uh, and uh, Fenton really hot from the outside right now. First free throw good for Jack Dahl. And that kind of breaks that streak here, but it's got to be a little frustrating here because you've made I think you've made plenty of baskets for Mounds, but they're not threes, <laughs> yeah, and that no. three pointer is the great equalizer. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And they've had they've had you know you th to look at well. Take a look at that halftime at the stats. They, they have out-rebounded the Huskies uh, offensively quite a few times. One out of two for Dahl. Deishan takes it. A bit of a small lineup for the Huskies. Mikey takes it in, loses his control, and he loses the basketball. Wanted a bump foul, but wasn't going to get it. 
turnover there on the Huskies as Fenton back in. Fenton and Kopetsky have been the offense so far. Three threes for Fenton, three for Kopetsky, nine each, and it's 18 to 11. Good effort by Miles right now. As Sampson just putting a blender here by Mikey Deishan in the back. Now he's going to have to, whoa, well, that's stolen by Kopetsky, but he lost his balance. Didn't travel. There's numbers the other way. Can they finish this off in the corner for three? Got it. That's a big gift because they had the turnover, but Kopetsky lost his balance, but Arnold knocks down a three. That's just good opportunistic basketball by the, uh, by the Mustangs. 18-14, 8.48 to go, opening half. Very fun start here so far at the gym. Three ball, Kopetsky staying hot from the outside. Oh my goodness. Nothing but odd numbers coming up for the Huskies right now. 12 for Kopetsky on four three balls, and he's not slowing down. Those aren't even touching the rim. Arnold, Edelman, now Sampson up top. Sampson, ball fake, and he'll get a bump foul on Mikey Deeshan. Deeshan trying to step in front, but, uh, you know, I love the energy from him. He's just uh, not going to let anyone get an easy basket on him. Shaw back in, Denicky back in. As Miles gave them some nice minutes, though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Key for Denicky, though, is you got to play pretty conservative on the floor here. You can't pick up a third. Samson on the catch and shoot can't finish. Yeah, you, you, he does, he, and uh, they know that. But they've also got to give Fenton a, 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 a blow for uh, uh, the other big over there. Yeah. Got to give yeah, got to give Shaw some time yep. too, and they've uh, they've done that. Now Denicky on the inside, this is what they want. Haven't been able to do that yet, but that was easy from Luke Denicky, and hey, uh, finally a two pointer <laughs> for the Andover Huskies. Twenty three fourteen. Got to be impressed here so far, Jim, with what you're seeing. Yeah. Denicky able to back him down. Got away with a walk, but they turned it over anyway. So pretty close to starting five back out there right now. And you mentioned both uh, both Fenton and uh, Kopetsky have been just burning from the outside. Now if they can get it into Denicky, that just opens up the three ball even more. I agree with that. If you're Moundsview, you got to feel like you've just yeah. been just hit with a one-two here. Drive by Shaw just back in. That's going to be a block because it's inside the semicircle, it looks like. And that's not where you're going to get a charge. That's in the uh, in the halo. We'll see. Rowe picks up his second, and Rowe's been quiet, just the two points so far, and he might have to go sit for a minute. We'll see. They might leave him on the floor, too. Yeah, this late in the uh, first half, you, you might want to just make sure this doesn't become unobtainable by halftime. Aiden Shaw's got it up to 10, just like that. Difference is it's seven threes to two threes. That's a huge difference. Yeah, yeah you're right. Absolutely. Magali back in, along with uh, Jack Brandle. Fenton's got it. Now Begali. Swinging it around there as Jack Brandle had it for a second. Oh. Up for grabs, Denicky trying to finish, can't do it. Big clear from Krushanis, and he gets bumped a bit, but no call, letting him play on. Good job there. It's a big possession for Moundsview. Take the high screen. Nope, he won't. Instead, it's a drive by Fredheim. Inside, Krushane is turning around with a soft touch and gets it to go. A right, really nice job by Krushane. Good footwork. Gets into the lane and, and puts up, like you said, a nice soft touch. Boy, Ryan, that's Shaw getting the getting the baseline, and now Denicky will get called for a uh, reach. Will be called on Denicky from Sampson. I think what you're seeing here is this Moundsview team's got to be looking around going, I don't think we've played that poorly. <laughs> and we're down by eight. What's yes. going on? Yeah. You know, what do they got to do right now yeah, besides yeah. try to defend the three, right? It's the obvious statement. But what do yeah. they need to do? Yeah, they've done a good job of getting the offensive boards. They just haven't been able to, to really finish on, on the second and third chances. Magali up top, driving, left hand, trying to take on the trees. Can't get it done there, but he gets his own rebound. Back up top, Fenton for three. He squares, and he makes it. Luke Fenton's on fire. 
I think that hand's okay. Yeah, hand's probably fine. Timeout taken. And they are not touching the rim. No, they are. Just <laughs> yeah, it's all nylon. It just it it's the cords are, are melting. And uh, you yeah, remember no. NBA Jam, Jim? You remember that in the '90s where the net was literally on fire? <laughs> yes. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's absolutely. And you know, I, I you know on the separate on the separate side for Mouse View, they you know they really need to make sure that they're they they've got to get Rowe going. Eli yep. Rowe is is really the the catalyst. So let's take a look at the standings so far for the Northwest Suburban Conference. It's been fun up top. I yeah. mean, Rogers off to a hot start. Totino playing well. Park Center always seems to play well. Osseo and Anoka's off to a 2-1 start. Andover's off to a 2-1 start. Even after that early loss to Anoka, they've yeah. responded in the conference. Uh, the team that's off to the to real sluggish start here is Blaine. Blaine really seems like they're out of sorts. And when you consider what they were returning, that's a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, it, uh, yeah you're right. And then, you know, this uh, you know this is uh, Park Center is the same uh, uh, section as uh, Moundsview. They have owned the Section 5 for the last uh, couple of years. In fact, uh, they have ended the uh, Mustang season the last four years. To the point where I think Monsford doesn't even want to wear green anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think that's what it is. Pretty sure. <laughs> Fretheim off the turnover. Up to Logering. Logering's going to think baseline. Now drive, dish. Back up top, Dahl. Dahl, who had the big game the other day, as you mentioned. Has one point so far tonight. He's waiting on a drive and kick if Logering can take it. Instead, he'll go the other way. Sampson, who's going to pull up for two and miss it. He's falling away, not totally square on that jumper. Fenton on Fretheim. Going to take it. Going to go off, but he's blocked. He comes right back down. Bagali. Back up top, Brandel. Now Bagali again. Inside Denicky. Denicky just muscling in. Over the back, they could have called there, but no, as Dahl is able to help get the rebound secured for Moundsview. Well, that's you know that's just the power of, of Luke Denicky down there, 6'6", six, six, probably 220, 230, somewhere around in there, just a powerful young man. Krushanis, the drive, dish, Logering in the corner for three. Now, and they can't finish, and that's the difference right yeah, now, Jim. One really side's is. making them, one side's not. Fenton squaring from downtown. He leaves it short, and a rebound by Sampson. That was from the volleyball uh, extended <laughs> line right there. I don't know. A little out of the range, maybe. Caitlin Clark. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> That's uh, Caitlin Clark range. Sampson, the drive, looking for Krushanis. Now Fredheim drives. Nice leave for Sampson. That's good basketball from the Mustangs. Sampson well, on the board. It's smart, too. You've got, uh, you know, one of uh, the the bigs down there, Denneke, with two fouls. Why not go inside? I agree. Yeah. Fenton thought about it, but he didn't handle it right away. Now he'll drive and do the teardrop over the top. Can't finish. And a rebound taken again as Krushanis. Or not take that back. Fredheim cleaning it up underneath. Fredheim has it the other way. Guarded by Shaw. Turnaround or Bagali. Turnaround. Makes that one. Gets the members bounce that time. Fredheim has seven. Back to seven point game here. The drive. Brandel. Straight up off the window, can't finish. Nice follow up there. The old tip drill from the old 21 game from Luke Denicky. <laughs> Just put him back down to zero. Denicky's got four. Logering. Drive. Dish. Sampson. Wide open three. Got it. Big basket right there. And now five for Sampson in a row. 29-23. Fun first half. Shaw catches up top. Denicky traveled first. Can't lift the pivot foot first. Can't do that. Well, that's why you put throw it to him when he's in the paint. Yeah, so. that, that's what it is. He's uncomfortable out there, Jim. <laughs> that's what it is. I don't know. So the Huskies were in a zone on this last uh, uh, on this last defensive set. Let's see what if if they go. They got a little. A little pressure. You feel like both teams are trying to do the same yeah. thing where they drive and kick out. Yep, yeah, yep. So that looks like they're back to a, a man. Fresh into the game. They go to the subs. Tyler Nystrom on to the game. Double zero, which you always love a double zero. Fredheim pull up over the top. Got it. Fredheim with nine. Well, they're definitely heating up as far as the percentage of shots. Just like that, they're weathering the storm back yeah. to a four-point game. Fenton 
Kapetsky also back on the floor. Both guys insanely hot right now. 12 points each on four threes. Kapetsky the drive oh. and off the window and good for Alex Kapetsky. That is just pretty. Goodness gracious, that's nice. I wonder what the horse games are like at the Kapetsky <laughs> house. Well, you remember that old commercial with Larry Bird and yeah, Michael Jordan? It's probably a lot like yeah. that, I gotta imagine. Shaw grabs that rebound. Kapetsky again. Thought about the heat check. He stops at the elbow. He goes back to Begali. Inside Miles. Miles guarded by Krushanis, and Miles just bully balls Krushanis. How would you like that into your chest? That's when I knew I had to give up playing, uh, you know, just YMCA basketball, Jim, was when some young 18-year-old showed up and burrowed his shoulder into me one time. Yeah, well, I tell you, you know, you look at, you look at the Huskies and, and height, you know, not, uh, they don't have a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, but they do have width. And you look at Aiden Shaw, you look at uh, Miles, you look at Denneke, they're just, uh, they're, they're good athletes and, and kind of traditional Andover athletes who, uh, have a good wide base. Miles gets one out of two. And, yeah, you can see it's a little raw with Miles, but, boy, you, you like what you have there as far as just the oh, raw yeah. materials are concerned. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Giving him some nice minutes here as part of Coach Hable's rotation. 32-25. Edelman. Back up Logering. The drive, the dish to Nystrom. Nystrom drives in, and uh, that one altered nicely by Kapetsky. Mikey deshan has got a full head of steam the other way. He'll pull up at the elbow, give way to Fenton, who's got a hand in his face but shoots it anyway as Royce Kaitola does a nice job of actually getting the hand up on the, on the three-point shooter. Yeah, he was right there, and it looks like uh, Edelman may be a little gimpy. He'll still set the screen on Shaw. Logering's going to go through it and keep it and make it. That's five for Logering in a five-point game with a minute five to go in a fast-moving first half. Four, only eight fouls, now nine. So far called, and I jinxed it right there, but this has been a very clean, very fast-paced half. It, it has, and, and uh, you know, it's there's not a lot of, uh, turn, there hasn't been a lot of turnovers. It's been, uh, you know, get it up on the glass and uh, have somebody clean it up. And for the Huskies, it's just, uh, you know, get beyond the arc and throw it up. This is kind of, that's fun basketball to watch yeah. too, man. It, it keeps it things moving. Is. Yep. Can't stand the whistle fest. And I've seen a few of them already this year on QC where we've had just a lot of whistles. And nice to see them play. Good poke away there by Fretheim on Kapetsky. And he's bumped by Kapetsky. And that's probably a good foul. Will they give him the continuation yeah, on that? They wow. Did. Yep. Wow. So they got a chance to cut it down to two. With less than a minute left. Basket's good as Fredheim up to 11. How about 12? And now 32-29. Boy, if you're Moundsview, you got to feel just thrilled, yeah, Jim. Absolutely you do. You know, they, they basically made a, you know, a 14-4 a run, a 14-6 run. Yeah, they were down as much as 10, and now just down two. Three from the corner, Quinn Stay bounces it hard off the side. And Krushanis there for the rebound. And it's not last shot time because we have a shot clock now, but definitely a chance at two for one here if they play their cards right through the Huskies. Logering's going to drive. Go over Miles again. This time can't finish. Rebound Edelman kicks it back. Arnold, Arnold goes over the top. He can't finish the bunny. And Miles grabs the rebound. Now nice. last shot time. Yeah, great rebound by Edelman. Three Huskies around, and they just kind of forgot to box out. Edel. There's Kapetsky. He's going to hold one shot. I'd be surprised if this leaves his hands. He wants to go on Edelman. He'll kick, though. Mikey Deshin doesn't have the matchup there, but now they got it for Kapetsky outside. No, he can't finish. And that will take us to the end of the half. Ooh. Not a bad look. I don't know if that would have counted anyway, but 32-30, <laughs> a very action-packed first half. Uh, team shooting the three. Uh, it's been really impressive, Jim. Yeah, and I think the Moundsview, they took a timeout. They came out of the timeout, and they really challenged those three-point shots and have really uh, you know, brought themselves back into this game. 
Should be fun to watch in the second half. It's a close one. We've got a good one here, so keep enjoying it on QCTV. 32-30 and over at the half. My name is Jess. Um, I own Muddy Paws Doggy Daycare here in Andover. So we do overnight boarding and um, daycare, and then we also do some light grooming, just baths, nail trims, that kind of stuff. Um, all of the dogs that board with us get to spend their entire day in daycare. They're not kenneled throughout the day. Um, we give breaks and naps and stuff as needed, but for the most part, everybody hangs out in our play area all day long. And then we also, with our daycare program, um, owners can drop their dogs off and pick them up um, later in the day, you know, if they are working or have a busy day or, you know, whatever's going on, they just need a break from their dog if they're working from home, which happens sometimes. So yeah, so we just, they, they hang out, they play. We have a large indoor area, large outdoor area. They're supervised 100% of the time while they're in play, play time. Um, and they just get a lot of exercise and socialization and yeah. I think one of my favorite part about the dogs is when we have a dog that comes in that at first is kind of shy and reserved and not sure of herself or himself and then you know after a short time or a couple days of daycare they come out of their shell and they find a friend and they just like it, it, they just become this super happy you know they're t they come in and their tails wagging versus being a little nervous so that's definitely my favorite part is just I get really excited when when they when they make that 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 leap into playing and making friends and things like that I live in Andover um, I have four daughters and they all attend the Andover schools um, and so when I was looking to add a second location I really really wanted to to go to the stick with Andover. Um, it's a growing community, um, you know, there's tons and tons of kids and families, and usually with kids and families comes dogs. Um, you know, you, you drive anywhere or walk anywhere, there's always people out walking their dogs, and I just felt like it was just something that the Andover community needed. I have an absolutely amazing staff. I work really hard to find um, people that share the same passion with the dogs as I do and they just they truly do an amazing job and I can assure you that they take very very good care of each and every dog that is here because they do feel so so warmly about all of the dogs that are, do come in. It's just a really great community um, full of lots of great people and I love being able to you know, go to the gym or go to a, an event or a sporting event or just even Walmart, Target, you know, restaurants and I see people who I take care of their dogs. So it's just so much fun to have that link to where we live plus having a business here. Um, it just makes it, pulls it all together and I mean I'm constantly like meeting people that I know and then they, they bring their dog here and they're like, oh my gosh, you own this place? It's like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's just a fun connection between the community I live in and um, you know, families and their pets and things like that. The Rum River Tunnel right next to City Hall is getting a new design and everyone in the community is invited to leave their mark. The City of Anoka received a grant from the Metro Regional Arts Council to bring community art back to the city. Local artists assembled to organize, collaborate, and brainstorm ways to get the community involved to lend a hand with this great project. So now every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. is the set time for the community mural painting right next door to the Rockin' on the Rum concert series in Riverfront Memorial Park. I met up with two of the artists involved to learn more about this great effort to revise the mural in Anoka. Yeah, so kind of making it like a mix. Yes, I try to mix it right on the wall. I work for Rum River Art Center and I'm kind of the coordinator between us artists and the city of Anoka. Part of the grant was to involve the community, so every Wednesday starting today on June 21st from 5 to 7, a few of us artists that are painting will be here to engage the community and let them leave their mark uh, in the tunnel. I really love collaborating and this whole project has been about collaborating. We've been meeting for months and figuring out like how each piece might fit together and so on a broader scale we've all been sort of working that way as artists and figuring out how to blend. Um, but then my son is also an artist, he's seven, and um, helped me paint the 
Rock Art and Mural as well, and it was just kind of magical to have their touch added in there. I'm probably going to work it in in different ways. It might not look exactly how they did it, but um, I'm interested in having the community sort of, you know, add their touch and feel like they're a part of it. Even adding the fishermen's catches is, you know, kind of making the community feel like they're a part of the experience. The last tunnel mural lasted for 10 years, so there is a high expectation for this one to last even longer. So keep an eye out for the artist painting throughout the summer and make sure to take advantage each Wednesday to leave your mark in the mural before it's too late. And as this is happening simultaneously with the Anoka Concert Series and Farmer's Market right next door, there will never be a shortage of ways to get involved with the community this summer. Hi there, I'm Cameron Catonin, City of Andover Natural Resources Technician. I'm here to talk about the Nature Preserve Commission, formerly known as the Open Space Advisory Commission, which is an advisory board to the City Council. This group is primarily tasked with management and maintenance decisions of the four nature preserves in the City of Andover. This group was originally formed in 2006 to help decide what properties to purchase after the approved $2 million bond referendum that same year. After that referendum went through, the group helped to decide on four preserves that were purchased. The group is also tasked with looking at potential funding options for potentially buying new land in the city. The group generally meets quarterly on the second Wednesday of the month at around 6 p.m. So in beginning in November, December, we will be looking for uh, new members to the group. There will be information in the no November, December edition of the city newsletter, which will outline the application uh, process uh, and instructions for if you are interested in applying. So if you are interested in the outdoors, interested in being a part of the community and being uh, working as, along with the city of Andover, and also, would like to meet new people, this might be a great opportunity for you. Hi, I'm Jason Baumuck and I'm the Parks and Streets Operations Manager here at the City of Andover. Uh, the City of Andover is a growing community and the park and recreation play a vital role in the residents' quality of life and well-being. Resident volunteers serving on the Park and Recreation Commission have been an invaluable asset in growing our park system to over 67 uh, city parks with 32 miles of trail connecting them all together. Most recently, the commission has been responding to uh, residential development within the city by planning for neighborhood parks and advising the city council on re other related topics such as park improvements and recreation. The Commission also promotes recreational programming within Andover's parks by working with the youth athletic associations to provide excellent facilities for games, practices and tournaments, and events such as hosting movies in the park. If you are interested in serving on the Park and Recreation Commission, please fill out an Advisory Commission application form available on the City of Andover website. Applicants should have an interest in public policies, a willingness to learn, and good problem solving and communication skills. Meetings are held the first and third Thursdays of every month at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers here at Andover City Hall. So feel free to stop into a Park and Recreation meeting to see what it's all about. QCTV is proud to announce award recognition for 2022, including 10 Telly Awards, and two ACM Hometown Media Awards. QCTV is dedicated to providing high quality content for our community. We are grateful for the support and we look forward to another exciting year here at QCTV.
and welcome back. We get set for the start of the second half. Andover mounds you 32-30 at the break. The Huskies lead Tim Anderson and Jim Childs, who went ahead and had a nice press conference. You had coffee yes. with your yep. constituents here. You got out mingled, shook a lot of hands. Uh, uh, every... you, are, you are in demand out here. Let's do a first half recap here, Jim, <laughs> see how things went, and then you can tell us all about your stumping that you're doing on the campaign trail. Absolutely. This so, first half was crazy, wasn't it, with a lot of threes? It, it really was, and Andover did a nice job of being able to clean up the glass on, on most of it. To be honest, the threes reigned for them. Eight threes in the first half. Uh, to two for Moundsview, uh, but uh, you know, Moundsview hung in there. They they came out. They kind of shut down the perimeter uh, halfway through the third period or through the first half, and uh, you give it to uh, the, uh, the uh, Mustangs for hanging with it. Absolutely, we get set to start the second half. Fretheim led the way for the Mustangs. He had 12. Kapetsky led the way with 14. Nice little drive by Krushanis to start the second half, and we are off and running in a tie game at 32. Kapetsky at 14, Fenton had 12, turnover as Kapetsky looked for Begali. Hard to tell them apart as they have gone with the matching <laughs> hairdos. Well, that's that's uh, that's residual from the uh, the uh, high school uh, football season as they go to state in an Andover tradition of blonde, uh, going blonde. It takes me back to my high school days. Like, I'm waiting for some Backstreet Boys songs to come on. <laughs> <laughs> little drive to the basket by Rowe, and he can't finish. And Rowe was the guy that couldn't really get going in the first half, just two. Yeah, and, and he's he's kind of the motor that or the engine that makes this motor run. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I don't know if the engine makes a motor run. But I, I, think, I, you get, I think you get my what yeah, I, I think drift. so. Your, yeah. me, your, your, your mechanics are sound. <laughs> Samson almost lifted that pivot. Instead gives way to Fredheim, who comes up short. Krushanis keeps it alive, but throws it to nobody in particular. Nice job by Samson, though, to keep it and maintain possession. They got eight to shoot. Yeah, Samson, strong player. He's a smart player. Lengthy. He's, one of the, he's their best defender. Yeah, because he's big and tall. And yeah. He plays on the perimeter a little bit. A little pump fake there. You got to shoot, though, down to five to shoot, four to shoot. They got to go. Logering needs to pump this up and does right as the buzzer's going. First time we've even gotten close to that, but they get a rebound and a steal. Kapetsky's got it, and he's running in the floor one on three and takes it all the way in. Wow, what a great finish by Kapetsky. Good steal. That's his second steal of the uh, game. The first one he kind of tripped on. That one, he was nice finish with it. 16 points for Kapetsky. Almost half the team scoring. Him and Fenton combined for 28 of the team's 34. Fredheim, nice turn. He goes straight up and draws contact on Fenton, and that will put Fredheim at the line. Well, I tell you what, offensively, or, uh, the offensive rebounds are definitely following, following to the uh, Mustangs. They, uh, they seem to be able to clean up that offensive glass a lot today. You're starting to see them get inside a little yeah. more, Jim, like yeah. getting a few more chances, drawing some more contact, getting to the line. Fredheim's first here of the second half. Can't get them both. One out of two. Huskies lead by one. That's 13 for Fredheim. He leads the Mustangs. Kapetsky guarded by Sampson. Begali now works with Fenton up top. Kapetsky drives with the right hand. Now switches to the left midstream and lays it in. Beautiful play by Alex Kapetsky. Well, the defender has to has to respect his ability to shoot from the three, so he's got to step on him right from the start. And that was just an excellent finish again. Yeah, they'll need help in the paint if he's able to get past that first line of defense. Because you're right, you got to come up and guard him. Yep. But you got to have help there, too. 36-33. Logering drives. Nobody home. Back up top, Krushanis. Looking for a drive and kick. Logering in the corner. Instead, he'll take baseline. Nobody home. Back up top, Sampson. Sampson rush that one and leaves it short and a rebound taken from Andover as Fenton controlled it. Get that vibe, Kapetsky maybe starting to take the game over. Three ball. Oh, just missed it. He's first one he's missed. He's been really good from back there. That's on the line and it's going to be Moundsview ball. Yeah, Shaw mixing it up down below. He's one of those another really good rebounders. He's averaging about seven rebounds a game right now for the Huskies. Logering brings it across. Going to work the perimeter here. It's just underway in the second half. 36-33, Huskies lead. Samson, Krushanis. 
for Shane. It's a little pump fake. Turn around, little Hakeem the dream move there, but not able to finish. And a race for it by Rowe, and a good save. Logering kicks it back. Sampson, Rowe's open for three. That's going to be long, big time. Sampson gets the rebound, though, and puts it in. Uh, Shaw, Shaw was in great position. He just kind of got uh, tingly finger, fingertips and went rolled down his leg. Well, talk about a uh, Christmas present right there to Sampson. Yeah. He was able to just fell right in his lap. The gift. Easy little layup for Sampson, and he's come on seven points. How about a three for Fenton? No. And that's off Denneke. So now the threes that couldn't miss early <laughs> yeah, on. We've uh, missed a couple to start the second yeah, half, Jim. Exactly what I was thinking is that, uh, you know, Shad, or both uh, Fenton and uh, Kopetsky missed their last two this half. It's a welcome sight for Coach Leeser. He's thinking, well, where was that earlier? Sampson for three, got it. And he's got 10. And just like that, the Mustangs have the lead, 38-36. Well, it's just persistence by the this Mustang team. That's a good idea. Let's go inside Denneke. Can't finish on the inside. Like that idea, though, Jim. Just not able to finish. Yeah, do it again, and then let's kick it out. That's a uh, uh, nice job by Eli Roll with the defense. Nice move by Logan. Get a backdoor cut right there. Inside Fredheim. Can't finish, and Fredheim's going to get fouled. Or who's it going to be over the back, maybe, on Roll? Let's see what they call. Looks like it's on Shaw. Might be, yeah, might be Shaw with the body. Yeah, holding on to the arm. We'll take another look right here. Right there, yeah, the push. Yep, yeah, just. That's a good call. Yeah, Fredheim makes the first one. Good start here by the Mustangs on a 9-4 to four start to the second half. And how about both for Fredheim? Fredheim three at the line to start this half. He's got 15. The big lift has come from Samson, giving them a three and a two here to start the second half. Yeah, a little pressure now, more on from the, the Mustangs. Huskies in a position now where they're trailing, which hasn't happened much here after they got out to the big lead. We'll see how they bounce back. Fenton, nice drive. Can't finish the little runner, but Denneke on the rebound can't finish that either. Couple of bunnies, and now a foul there as Denneke goes straight <laughs> up strong. Well, he's averaging 15 rebounds a game, or 13.4 rebounds a game. You can see right there, he got three of them. Yeah, and right. he was, he was, I mean, he was uh, all him, muscle. See, good positioning right there. Strong goes right back up. Good positioning again. You're seeing some little bunny misses, though, yeah. by Andover. Do you want to yeah. finish those? Because that could have been a three-point play just as easy. Now, if you're Mounds, yeah. you're thinking, hey, good foul. He missed the free throw. Yeah, you're right. And 0 for 2 on Luke Denneke here as things of the iron unkind has emerged for the Andover Huskies to start the second half. Catch at the elbow. Rowe. Fredheim. Now Logering. Kind of hanging around here in a bit of a zone of the Huskies. Nice little drive by Fredheim. Can't finish. Good offensive board by Eli Rowe. Feeds Fredheim inside. And Mustangs will slow it down a bit, 14 to shoot. Now eight to shoot. The drive by Logering, drive kick, wide open three for Dahl, can't finish. And a good rebound secured by Fenton. Again, the offensive glass opportunities for the Mustangs. Yeah, not able to cash in that time, yeah. but they got the extra look. The drive by Begali. Begali drives in, takes it all the way this time, and amongst the trees, able to put it down. Nice job by Cameron Begali as he gets his first hoop of the game. So Jeremy Habel calls his timeout. Not looking exactly happy with uh, the effort on the floor right now. I think some of the energy that they had in the first half is, is missing, and I think that, that, that'll come back out. Uh, you can see Mikey uh, Dishan coming, uh, checking in, but... Uh, Jim, rankings. Class 4A rankings, and then I want to get back to that question that you were just kind of posed there, Jim. Why is that up top 6-0? and Park Center, of course. Again, some of the usual suspects, yep. Jim, right? Uh, Minneapolis Washburn having a nice year. 6-1 and one to get rolling. They're eighth right now at Buffalo Squads, looking pretty good. 
Uh, it's again, it's a very interesting uh, group from all across the yeah. Metro in that 4A ranking. Yeah, Minnetonka is one of those uh, sleepers too from the lake. Uh, uh, you know, how they finish with YZ will be interesting to see how that one plays out. Made baskets seem to spur energy a lot of times, it, I would think, Jim, right? You're, if you're right. some missed yeah. baskets, some frustration starts mm -hmm. to set in. I wonder if yep. that's maybe plaguing. Maybe that basket by Bagali can be what they're looking for. Exactly. You know, listen, you're you're not you haven't lost a game. It's still early. You, you know, you've got you've got plenty of time left. Play our game. Do what you did in the first first ten minutes of the first half. And if you're Moundsview, you fought, you weathered yeah. the storm. Now you've got some momentum here. You're probably thinking, hey, like this game is now. I think we're in their yeah. heads, and I think we can seek momentum here. Yeah, something we haven't seen so far. Uh, Miles and Denicky on. Uh, in now, so two solid interior players. We'll see how that changes the offense a little bit. Fenton, for the kind of a swingman, can rebound too, so that's interesting. Going with Kapetsky and Dishan in the backcourt. Eli Rowe, and again, they've done this with a very quiet night for Eli Rowe, who's come in averaging 18. Turn around, Fredheim. Oh, beautiful oh. ball rotation, and Logering's wide open for three, but can't finish. Sampson again, who's been a menace to start this half. Rowe puts it on the floor, drives on Denicky, can't finish. And a rebound by Miles. Good job by Denicky to disrupt that shot. Yeah, kind of pushed him away from the basket. And that makes that a lower percentage shot. Yep. Feed to Miles, and that's poked by Sampson. Yeah, Sampson seems to be everywhere right now for Moundsview. He, yeah, he's he's the energy that uh, that in in the same thing that Mikey Deishan is for the Huskies. So think maybe looking for a little bit of that out of Miles and Deishan, right? You got to think, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. with Miles on the inside, he can bruise and bang and just create some different looks here for this Andover team. Outside Fenton, needs one, gets one. Fenton gets his fifth three of the night. That gets him 15 on the game. And the Huskies retake the lead by one, 41-40. And that's going to be a reach foul on Mikey Deishan. And Coach Abel doesn't like it. Mikey Deishan doesn't like it. But a smart move by Mikey to just let it go. Uh He looked like he got all ball. It doesn't look like he disrupted. Might have been just the reach is what yeah. they were looking. The motion itself is what yeah. I think they were calling. Got to be careful with that. And he's, again, trying to be aggressive, trying to force turnovers. 41-40. The drive by Fred Heim, and how good was that finger roll? A beautiful take that time by Joey Fredheim. And he's got 17. 42-41, the Mustangs take the lead again by one. Kapetsky looks for a Denicky screen. Nice hedge by Krushanis. Turn around, Kapetsky, short, and a rebound taken by Fretheim again, who seems to be everywhere. <laughs> uh, what a good night, came in averaging 16. Little killer crossover move, drive kick for Dahl. Three ball, that's long. Mikey Deishan, small sky on the floor, jumps up out of the gym to get the rebound. Feeding Denicky over the top. He keeps it alive for Miles, who takes it straight up and can't finish. Boy, what, a, what an athletic move by Denicky. Good save to keep it alive. Now Logering brings it across. Both teams trading. Dahl hasn't gotten it going from the outside. He's guarded by Miles. Catch at the elbow, kind of a flex look there. It's Fredheim, turn around, Jay knocks down another one. Well, Fred, Fred putting Heim a night is, together. Yeah, he's. Turnover City on the Huskies. Fredheim's got uh, 19 points. Well, he's, uh, he, he's their go-to guy. I mean, it's just uh, uh, get the ball to number 12 one way or the other. Feels like, yeah, he's got a matchup he likes. Oh, yeah. You know, and so yeah. I think they're trying to exploit that. Now, they're going to sit Samson and Fredheim down for a minute. This is going to be an interesting thing to watch, Jim. See who picks up the scoring while those two sit. So the 10-minute mark, basically, you see how long it takes uh, for one of them to get back in. Yeah, they've got 29 of the team's 44. That one's kicked off the foot of Kapetsky, and it'll stay with Moundsview. Under 10 to go here in the game, and in a fast-moving game, brisk basketball game we like to call it. Good steal by Bagali. Bagali's got some numbers if he sees it. Instead he backs off. Kapetsky drives it down the lane. Can't finish that one and a rebound by Rowe. Boy there's been a lot of looks for Andover. Yeah it really has and Bagali did a nice job of waiting for some reinforcements. 
Nothing there as Logering has to spread it around to Dahl. Now Rowe. Dahl again inside feed Arnold. Arnold's on Kapetsky. Dahl again the drive. Inside feed in the lane. Got to go if you're Krushanis. Goes to the left hand and draws the foul on Deshaun. Well, nice job by the Mustangs to get a matchup that uh, they like with Krushanis on, on uh, um, Deshaun. Definite height advantage down below. Yeah, it's kind of a mouse in the house kind of situation yeah. is what they like to say. When you get a big on a small inside the paint like that, you got to feed quickly. Yes. And that's what they did. Now, Krushane is not, does not able to knock down the first one. deshan has got three fouls here today. Aiden Shaw back on the floor. And one out of two for Krushane. That'll give him five on the night. And that's going to get Nate Edelman back on the floor as well. So going with a little more size for the Mustangs. Still Andover a bit small. 45-41. Mustangs lead. Logering comes out to guard on Begali, who drives in, drive pull up, shot from the free throw line, just missed it because he's hard off the heel. Now it's a loose ball, and it's a race. Good job by Shaw to keep it alive, but instead it'll be Moundsview. A cutting Edelman. Out of control, and a rebound by Miles. They could have got a loose ball foul or some kind of offensive on Edelman that time. He was just ahead of steam, but out of control the whole way. Kapetsky. Looking for help, gets it from Deshaun. Now they spread it around and slow down. 20 to shoot. Backdoor cut for Shaw. Shaw goes straight up and again oh. can't finish. Boy, too many looks like that for the Huskies have just not fallen. And that uh, really is a difference so far with the four-point lead for the uh, Stangs. You're 100% right on that. Uh, they've had a lot of looks yeah. from inside of five feet, Jim. Arnold slowing things down. Coach Leeser telling people to move. Does look a little stagnant here from the Mustangs. Back up, Edelman wants three, and oop, hard off the back iron. Rebound by Arnold. Another chance for Eli Rowe to get going. Can't get that one in, and a bump as Begali gets the rebound, and he's hit by Jack Dahl. Talk about Dave Leeson, the coach. Man, he has been the head coach since 2012-13 uh, uh, season. He's been part of this program as a coach for 33 years. He's an alumni, played basketball, graduated in 87. Uh, he is Mustang basketball. I would, that, I think that qualifies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, this is a program that you've had for, and part of for almost 40 years uh, as a player and a coach. You would say grandfathered in, but that, I mean, it feels almost <laughs> too on the nose. Great grandfathered in. Huh? Great grandfathered in. <laughs> now, I just realized I graduated before he did. Big oh. three from Fenton. And that'll be his sixth of the night. All of his points coming from beyond the arc. And they have got this down to a one-point game, 45-44. Fenton with uh, 18 on the night. Huskies needed that. Like you mentioned, that was uh, just a little life that they needed to have come in. Sampson back in. Didn't take long. Inside it's and then Belso Fredheim back in. Yeah. Arnold's for three. Missed it short. Mustangs haven't made them from the outside. Rowe with a turnaround, and that hoop's got a lid on it for Eli Rowe tonight. Great oh. hustle from Edelman. Sampson gets it right back. Nate Edelman for a long two. Not a high percentage look right there. And that's loosen up for grabs, and Arnold controls. He's firing from the outside, and everybody's leaving oh. it short. Rowe, Fretheim, and they'll slow down with 15 to shoot. Under seven to play. Sampson, Arnold. Both teams kind of ice cold here. Fredheim turn around. Jay leaves that short as well. Legs maybe Peace. starting to go on both teams. Arnold grabs that. Fredheim slows down as they reset that clock again. 10 to shoot. 6.35 to go in the game. It's a one-point advantage. Now the trap comes. Edelman's got to go. Five to shoot. Back to Rowe. Rowe's got to shoot. And he's firing it up there. And that's air ball shot clock violation. Great job by Andover. Yeah, really solid defense. You know, they, especially after giving up the, the three offensive rebounds. Got to get into that offense a little quicker off yeah. those offensive rebounds. It seemed like it just but took you're forever. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. 
Like that trap came out at with like seven to shoot and you're yeah. way out beyond the arc. It's gonna be hard for you to get the offense moving when you do that. You've got, uh, oh yeah, but it just, it looked like they were surprised. Once they rebounded the ball, everybody was like, oh, hey, great, we got it. Yeah. Just not a, enough uh, execution, so. Well, they're gonna get below the scoring numbers that we thought we would maybe yeah. see in this game. Trying to figure out who that favors. Inside drive Fenton, and we're going to get a body foul on Moundsview. I think that's Freyheim. That's, that's just his first. Yeah, Fredheim is in fine shape here. As he's played pretty clean. Yeah, a little body bump right here, right there. But it gets Fenton to the line. Fenton with 18 points. Kapetsky with 18 points. Mostly from the outside. Yep. Well, all from the outside from Fenton. If he makes this free throw, now they're going to talk and see if it's on the floor or if he's shooting. Coach Abel's like, hey, we're shooting. <laughs> Let me help you out on this decision making. Oh, what a great job he's done. Uh, he's, uh, this is his third year. He was able to bring the Huskies to state first two times. Uh, he's. Uh, oh, they're going to say on the floor now, so no free throws. But you're right, Coach Abel is very accessible, very easy to talk to. Oh, yeah, he's, he's done, he, but he's done just a, an excellent job with this program. Getting some strong guards to come out and play does not hurt things either. It makes things <laughs> no. very fun to coach when you have guards who can shoot and do stuff. You look like a genius. Yeah, no kidding. Denicky inside, and he's fouled by Edelman. Well, like we mentioned, I think that this is, you know, we had mentioned this before, get it down to Denicky. Let's, that maybe that will open up some of the outside. One thing you'd like Denneke to do there, you see how he kind of pump fake, Jim? You'd like yeah. to see him just go straight up. Use yep. your strength. Or if you're going to do the fake, do a full pump fake on the ground. Get the guy up in the air and stay yeah. composed and get an easy one that way. You might get the and one if you do that. Denneke does make the first. He's got five on the night. Yeah, there's a lot you like about Denneke's game and about Miles's game, but finishing at the rim, not the thing right no, now. No, no, no. And you give, you know, give the Mustangs credit. They've, they've challenged every shot. Yeah, Samson has had a few to the solar plexus tonight. He'll wake up sore in the morning, I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're tied at 45. 5.40 to go in what has been really a fun game. Fredheim up and under, beautiful. Gosh, that is so nice from Joey Fredheim. So nice. He's up to 21. He leads all scores. 47-45. He's Santana, smooth operator. Sade, smooth operator. Yeah, I was going to say, that's uh, smooth is just Santana with yeah. Rob Thomas. Yep. That's You're your right. stuff right there, though. Sade might be more your stuff. You know, on your campaign, is that the music you play at speeches and stuff like that? Do you? Let and now everybody, uh, Jim Childs comes uh, to the stage and Sade plays it. underneath <laughs> it. I can see that as a thing. <laughs> that's not it. You got what? other songs picked out as what am I guessing? Got a whole playlist? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, going back to the game. The gym go-to. I want to hear the gym in the car go-to playlist at some point today. We'll see if we get that out of you. Fenton the drive. Oh, man, that was a oh. big hit. Might be an offensive. What's it the is. call? It offensive is. as Fenton came in full head of steam. And it just depends on where the Moundsview player was sitting in the, the halo area there. Let's take a look. And if it's right, oh, he's above it. Yeah, that's well, actually his own guy. It looks like Rowe took out his own yeah, guy right did. there it, on the It replay. really does. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That now at we went at full speed from that spot from where we were, it looked like a good call yeah. at first. But yep. All depends on the angles. We're lucky to get the slow mo angle after we got our guy Dan down there handling business there with the handheld. So two point lead for the Mustangs. Krushanis. Fred Hall, oh, beautiful oh. feed. Beautiful feed, and Krushanis puts it away. Alex Krushanis up to seven, and Fredheim has taken over the basketball game. All right, that was just an unbelievable no look. Bagali for the answer. Nope, short. Rebound Sampson, almost fouled by Kapetsky over the back. Good job by Alex to not let that happen. Now Logering is going to say, no pick. Let me bring it across, and let's figure this out. Keeps the floor spread out for Rowe. And they like this Bagali Fredheim matchup. There they go again. Oh, backdoor cut. Somebody's asleep at the wheel. Can Logering finish it off? Yes! Gets the shooter's roll. Somebody got picked out or something on the back door because wide open came the Moundsview guard. Yeah, what a. Again, Moundsview is just offensively has changed their dynamic. 
It's and very that, efficient. Yeah, that's for it sure. really is. Driving in, and it looked like Fredheim tried to pull the chair on Bagali right there. That was one of my favorite moves back in the day, Jim, when a guy was coming at me just to kind of let him lean into me and let it just The old pull the chair move was my favorite. <laughs> Timeout taken by Moundsview in a 51-45 game. You know what's been quiet the last few minutes is Kapetsky. We haven't really seen anything moving his direction. It's almost like uh, Moundsview's kind of bottled him up a bit here the last few minutes. Well, well you're right. And, and, and Bagali has been the one who's been open, had the open looks and – you know, you want Fenton, you want Kapetsky. Uh, you know, if Bacali gets it, then you want to make sure that he's able to, to knock it down. As we see, Husky's coming up. Uh, they've got, got a good one. Ones. Yeah, they've got some tough ones against. That's Tino Grace. Hudson, I don't think they've played Hudson either. I think that's another one that I don't remember ever being on the schedule. The Anoka home game, I know you're Anoka guy. I under every guy. This is going to be a good one here at the, at, uh, the Husky house. And then Armstrong and Blaine. But... Uh, uh, that will be an excellent matchup, uh, the uh, Anoka Tornado. It's kind of a, you don't want to say throw out the record books because Andover really controlled Anoka for a long, long time. As you get a look at Moundsview schedule coming up, White Bear, North St. Paul, Forest Lake, Woodbury, a couple games on the road coming up for Moundsview. But you could tell, like, the one thing about the Anoka kids a few weeks ago in that game that they won at home, yeah. that was like a big, like, hey, we, we might be good kind of. That was a pivotal game for, for that Anoka team. If you ask a lot of those players, they'll tell you, like, that was a game we needed to have. Like okay. that's one, and same with the Blaine game that they won the other like, a couple weeks ago. There's they've circled some games on the calendar that have been like, yeah. hey, these are prove it games. These are the games that are going to determine just how good we are. And I think these Andover games are right there for them, no question about it. Uh, Speaking yeah. of games that you're going to be at, you're going to be right back here tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, Champlain Park against Andover girls basketball. We've got uh, Wyzetta and Anoka. Tatino, I'll be there for that one. Yes, uh, Tatino Grace and Anoka. And then wrestling. I think you've got that one. I got that with Ryan Nelson Kane. We're going to do some of uh, the, 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 the try meet. Uh, should be fun. Uh, Springer, I believe, has an excellent uh, squad again this year, Coach yeah. Springer. And uh, that will be a good duel. Or try, sorry. Not duel. Try. I will be uh, just trying to see where I can work in, you know, some my favorite Jim Ross uh, sayings, <laughs> you know. By God Almighty, you know, stuff like that. If I can work that in, I'll be happy. Danicky, the turnaround guy, right off the timeout. Nice job. Yeah, great job. Danicky, good footwork. Knew where he was. And that looked polished and, and in yeah. rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. But you want to see more of. Krushanis drives in, guarded by Shaw, back up top. Kapetsky going to guard Logering. And this is three minutes to go. This is pretty crucial stuff here, this next minute. They're going to bring the trap. In a good spot there as Denicky comes out with Kapetsky. Krushanis has the back door. Fredheim, and he missed it. Great job by Bagali getting back on defense. And here come the Huskies pushing the other way. Fenton kicks it. Shaw for the deuce. Missed it. I would have just taken it if I was Fenton right there, I think. I think I'd only want to kick if I'm getting a three. Yeah, well, Shaw, was, Shaw was open, like you said. But, you know, your, your money players are... Fetton and uh, Kapetsky. Now they're right back to resetting a little slower offense here for the Mustangs. 15 to shoot, 225 to play, and they lead by four. Up and under, Krushane has thought about it. Now Logering from way downtown got it. That's a huge basket. Huge basket for Cody Logering, and that gives him 10. The yeah, point that, guard made a big shot. He really did. It was uh, nothing... Now the Al bottom. Yep. Alex Kapetsky, Fenton. I, I was going to say, when are we going to see Fenton fire one up? Right there, we see the answer. 21. So the Huskies uh, call a timeout right after that. You can see Hebel's got a good plan. He had the, he had the uh, chalkboard uh, in his hand, the whiteboard in his hand, uh, even before uh, the shot went down. Yeah, Fredheim leads the way for Moundsview. Good job by you there to notice the, uh, I'm sure the full court press is probably coming from Coach Abel. Joey Fredheim yep. leads the way uh, for the leading the leading score, 21 points for Fredheim, 21 for Fenton, yeah. leading score for Andover. Uh, the difference is, is Fredheim has the 21. He's been impressive, but they're starting to get contributions now, logering up the 10 points, getting some, some nice work on that side. And we're still waiting a little bit for that on the Andover side. Kapetsky's been pretty quiet since early in this half. Well, that, that play, that, that three ball was 
uh, came from breaking the trap that that came that came right from Danicky and uh, Kapetsky. Once they broke that, they found the open per, uh, open shooter and, and uh, knocked it down. So and that's the conversation in the Mountain View huddle too, right? Yes. Is how, how do we beat this? Get, they're they're going to go full court press on us here. We yeah. got to get it across. Those kinds of things. Yeah, and you know, hey, just you know, be available. Look in that center part of the court, and, and uh, you know, it's, spacing's uh, going to be key too. It, here. it really is. Yep. Little Bone Thugs and Harmony playing in the gym. I'm sure this is in your playlist, right? Uh, this is uh, number three on the playlist. So when you know, my workout, it, you know, this is just getting warmed up. Yeah, this is just kind of good. Yeah, you just kind of start to feel yourself a little yeah. bit here with the yeah. crossroads by yep. Bone Thugs. Yes, for sure. Oh, boy. Samson thought about he throwing did. the old football pass, but they kind of faked press, and then they backed off and went to more of a half-court look. That low green was, uh, was on a fly pattern. Inside feed, Rowe. Rowe only with two points tonight. That's the surprise of this one. Fredheim comes back out, 15 to shoot. There's time, minute 40 to go. Drive by Logering, draws contact, up, good, count it. One coming, and Cody Logering starting to make some big baskets for the Mustangs. Yeah, three-pointer now, a, a uh, and one. And Fenton steps up, and yeah, he jumps. I wonder if Fenton just goes straight up, he might draw that charge right there. Yeah, just that's what makes this game so much fun. Well, it's tough in the moment to tell yourself that, right? To not <laughs> jump, right? It's so you got to be really disciplined. Bagali looks for three, and the quick answer no. got it. Cameron Bagali on the feed for Kapetsky, and a must. And that was a have to have shot right there. 56-53, we got a minute 22 to go. Logering breaks through, drive, kick. Eli Rowe for the answer, got it! Eli Rowe comes alive! That was huge, Kapetsky the drive, draws contact, he'll go to the line I think. Yeah, that's exactly what they, uh, what they needed is it stop that clock, get to the line. See if they can cut it down to four. You got the vibe that time that Kapetsky was like, I, I need to score here. <laughs> like, I can't give the ball it, up. Yeah, it's uh, he's been a little quiet in the second half. And Coach Hable is saying, uh, my guy was shooting it. He was driving to the hoop, and he was shooting it, and the referee's Absolutely. talking again to wonder if this is on the floor. I agree with Coach Hable here. I think uh, Kapetsky had this as a free throw opportunity, and I think they need to give it to him. And so it is going to be two shots, which is going to give Coach Leeser a chance to maybe bring his guys over for a quick discussion, kind of a quasi timeout. Mustang number 14, Eli Rowe, his third, seven. Really, it's uh, really didn't need to have that long of a discussion, I don't think. But I don't think so. That's a big miss by yeah. Kapetsky at the line. He seems a little rattled. He doesn't seem as comfortable as he did earlier in the game. Seems a little frustrated, maybe. Well, it, you get tired when you have to play defense. And That's he, true. And, they, and they've been playing defense, chasing quite a bit. Another timeout by uh, Andover. And they've got bodies on him the whole night, too. Yes. They're bumping him. They're running yep. him off stuff. He's, I mean, he's, it, Moundsview has made sure that they cranked up the physicality in this game. Not in a, not in a bad way, either. Just a well, good yeah. physical way. And they've challenged these guards, these smaller guards for Andover. Right, they've got seven fouls. I mean, it's not like they've been hammering on, on, on the other play, on the uh, Huskies. It's it's just been strong to the basket. You know, they've, they've really dominated the, the offensive glass and been able to get that critical offensive rebound and then move it around. And we mentioned that one set that the Mustangs had that, you know, where they just lacked a little energy, able to get the rebound, they weren't able to get, but they took time off the clock. We'll see if uh, they can clean up some of the uh, defensive challenges that the Huskies have had going in. And they don't have any problems trading three for one. You get a three from Rowe on one yeah. end, come back, Kapetsky only gets the one on this side. Yeah, oh, true, yep, yep. And now the rest of the game, you're Andover, you're thinking, we're gonna try to go two for one or three for two the yeah. rest of the way. Wouldn't be surprised if they maybe foul on this uh, session here. Well, you, yeah, you're, you've got one minute left. You've got uh, plenty of fouls to give. I expect them to play defense here, though, and yeah, full court pressure being applied by the Huskies, and it is aggressive. They've got they got Samson trapped in a quick timeout from Coach Leeser, as that didn't go according to plan. I think that was a foul, actually. Oh, you think so? Oh, wow, they did foul. Yep. 
So I think they call that a Magali. I don't think they mind that, though, if you're Andover, right? I mean, you'd uh, you love to get a steal, but hey, four seconds came off the clock. Again, you'll trade three for two. Well, let's see if, if, yeah, if Sampson misses one or two, yeah, absolutely. And they miss the one and one, so that's how you get possession right back. This is going to be a big possession coming up for the Andover Huskies. Under a minute to go. Bagali at the three-point line, waits for Kopetsky. Kopetsky being guarded by Sampson. The drive, the lay, the miss, and a rebound by Eli Rowe. And Kopetsky trying to get a steal but can't yet. Nice job by Moundsview. Can they get it across the line without being trapped? So far, so good, and they do. Nice job. Oh, they're going to get an easy look for a layup, but Fredheim keeps the basketball, but he traveled. He traveled there, too. Got away with a couple of walks there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Kind of a, and they do get the travel on that one finally at the end <laughs> as you take a look. I mean, he got all the way back one, to the free throw line two. without dribbling. Three. <laughs> Bagali trying to step back for a three. Can't Sampson doing a great job on defense. Kopetsky drives rejected by Rowe as there was nowhere for Alex to go. And Simps Sampson's in his hip pocket whenever he touches the basketball. Yeah, we mentioned at the beginning, Sampson's the best defender they have. He works hard, moves his feet. Yeah, it's been impressive defense yeah. to watch. Like, he has been in the wallet of Kopetsky the entire night. Crucial possession, 20 to go. Fenton for three, air ball, and that's a rip foul by Denicky. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Just ripped Eli Rowe out of bounds, yeah. and they didn't even call that. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh. Denicky gave a hip toss to Eli Rowe, and they somehow keep possession with under 20 to go. Back to Kopetsky, guarded by Dahl in a matchup. That Kopetsky just dribbles all the way through, no call. Now Logering, they got a foul. Yep, they do. And Kopetsky doesn't like it, but I actually think that was okay to not call. I, I don't. He was out of control coming into the basket he, he, there. Yeah. It's good defense. At the end of the day, it's it's good defense. The, you know, both these teams scored. You know, they're used to scoring 80s and 90s, and they're held to under 60. We'll see. That, you know, Masu may break it, break the seal for 60 right here. But and two will get it done for him here tonight. There's one. Logering really gave him a lift in this second half. Gives him 13 on the night. Made some big dagger shots here yeah. at the end. And Joey Freeheim, just excellent job all night tonight. Yep. 21 from Fredheim. He led the way. They'll inbound it. It's a seven-point lead. Kopetsky for three. Off the mark and out of bounds. And that's going to stay with Andover. But that's going to get a win for the Mustangs. This is a big one for them. On the road over the holiday break. All the excuses in the world to maybe not want to be motivated for this, and they show up and play a pretty spirited game. Fenton for a final three, misses it. And a good win for the Moundsview Mustangs tonight in what was a really entertaining basketball game. 61-54 in a game that was really interesting for most. Andover came out hot. Moundsview weathered the storm. They finish up strong tonight with a pretty balanced game. They get 30 in the first half, 31 in the second. They win it. Yeah, and, and uh, you, know, you got to credit their defense. They were just able to, to, to make some adjustments, shut down the Huskies' three-point uh, attack, and uh, they come away with a seven-point win. Partner, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It's always good to hang out with you. You got it. Excellent uh, job tonight. I want to thank all of our great folks here at QCTV who have put on, uh, did a great job for us today. Trinity in the truck leading the group today. Well done. Uh, well done by our camera crew, as always, getting all the great shots and making us look good and sound good, and that's very, very hard to do. So on behalf of everybody here, Jim Childs, Tim Anderson saying keep your head up, and we'll see you next time as Mountains View beats the Huskies 61-54.